Hey folks, I'm starting a brand new uh, YouTube channel and I'm going to take this opportunity to show off my pocket knife collection and kind of let you the YouTube uh, viewer understand what I feel is a practical pocket knife for me. That way later on down the road as I start doing reviews on a few of these knives you see here in front of you, you'll understand why I might like this or I might not like that and how that might pertain to you being a consumer because let's face it some people are worried about how heavy a knife is and it's got to be ultra lightweight some people are worried about how much real estate like myself a knife takes up in the pocket and not too worried about weight some people like this some people like that so through the course of this video I'm hoping to give you an idea of what I like that way when I go through and do reviews of these knives and give my opinions of these knives and in, uh, in later videos you'll understand where I'm coming from and whether you need to you know worry about that is that something you're gonna worry about or is that something you don't you're not too worried about even though it's a kind of a deal to me so let's go ahead and get into this uh, you should know that I am not a knife maker I'm not a knife expert I am strictly looking at this from a consumer point of view. I don't own any expensive knives. Most of my knives, um, my pocket knives here, I don't think I have a knife that cost over $90. Um, about $100 is the cap for me when it comes to knives. However, I am kind of pushing that. There's a few knives, Benchmade, Spydracos that I'm looking at that push the $200 mark. Um, there's also a couple other knives by a couple other makers out there. Um, I do have fixed blades as well. I have kitchen knives. So I'll be talking about a lot of different kinds of knives on this channel too. Probably won't just limit it to pocket knives. However, pocket knives is kind of where my obsession is and lies. And I tend to buy more pocket knives than any other kind of knives. Um, so, given that information, I got knives in the kitchen for cooking, I got knives that I take with me when I go outdoors and do camping or day trips or stuff like that. So a pocket knife for me is really more than, it's kind of a functional tool, it's a letter opener, cuts boxes open, cuts up a piece of fruit for the nieces and nephews, stuff like that. But it's not really, I, I'm not expecting it to go out and baton through a piece of wood or even make feather sticks or stuff like that. I got a nice outdoor knife to make feather sticks with. There's no reason for me to try and make feather sticks with my little CRKT LCK right here. It's just it's a ridiculous expectation to have of this particular knife. So with that in mind I am a light user that doesn't use a pocket knife for a long amount of time. Take it for what it is. I also carry with me almost this stays in my pocket, it just lives there. It's with me 100% of the time, and this is the Gerber EAB. Um, I carry this because sometimes I don't want to use my pocket knife. I'm in danger of cutting up against a piece of metal or concrete or something like that, and I'm worried about, you know, when I do this cut, it's at a weird angle or something where the blade's going to hit into the metal or it's right up against the metal and i got to cut along the metal or something like that and or scrape some gunk off some metal or scrape some gunk off of something that I just don't want to do with my normal pocket knife. So this is my blade saver. This keeps me from having to keeps me from damaging my blade. It's replaceable, just a little utility blade that comes out of there. Fits right into the watch pocket, the little uh, old timers watch pocket or coin pocket on the pair of jeans. Just perfectly and just disappears in there as long as you take the clip that comes with it off of there. So again, I I'm not going to hold these knives up to any kind of crazy expectations. I'm not a, with that, I'm not a blade steel snob either. I'm not worried about whether this has like M390 or S30B or whatever they call the blade, all the different blade nomenclatures and stuff like that that I just don't know. Um, a lot of the blades I use come in either D2 steel, D2 tool steel, OS 8, which I have one somewhere. Uh, 8CR13 MOB, which is Kershaw's favorite chunk of metal, uh, budget steels like that, and I'm fine with that. They hold an edge long enough where if I am going to use it to do the few cutting tasks that I'm doing during the day, light, dirty use, 
it, it's definitely going to make it back to the strop by the end of the day and most of these knives will make it all the way to the end of the week on 8CR13 doing the light duty task that I'm expecting of my knife to do so and if I do come across a day where I do some I find like a whole bunch of boxes that I have to cut up or I got a whole bunch of nieces and nephews coming at me to cut up fruit or something like that I mean then okay yeah I, I might visit the strop that evening when I get home as I'm watching TV but you know but other than that um, I do like uh, aesthetic wise I like gentlemen's folders I like the sleek look uh, not to mention it takes up a little less pocket space a lot less pocket space a lot less real estate in my pocket because again this is just living in my pocket I gotta get around this to get in there to get my wallet to get whatever else lives in that pocket usually some hearing aid batteries and some hearing aid filters I don't hear well either so that's usually what's kept in my right pocket and I go in there to get those things a lot more often than I go in there to use my knife. So my knife needs to be there, but it needs to stay out of my way as well because it's not being used as much as the other things that are being kept in that right hand pocket. I like the right hand tip up carry as I was saying. Simple mechanisms work best for me. I don't like safeties on knives at all like on this M&P right here where you know if you don't see the little dot then it's not going to fire or, or even close for that matter and it's just it's a pain in the neck it's an extra thing on a knife that you really don't need I feel maybe you feel like you need that safety in there it makes you feel like you can sleep at night but even this one right here that's got a little safety on it that doesn't even work anymore because the blades clipped on this particular knife I've never set or used because I'm never I'm yeah there is a chance it could come loose in my pocket or whatever but uh, it, it's not that it's not that I don't worry about it all that much it's not it's never happened to me and I've never have it happened to any of my friends either or brothers or sisters or anybody else that carries a knife in my life so um, I mean a lot of old timers for a pocket knife light duty use they're just carrying slip joints there's no lock on this knife at all like there's nothing keeping it from going back this way but they're not expecting this knife to baton through a piece of wood or anything like that either and I don't expect any of these knives to baton through a piece of wood so any of these locks really will work whether access lock, back lock, liner lock what else is there, frame lock, button lock Spyderco's got that compression lock so I mean all these locks are more than safe and will more than hold up a knife more than adequately even in even on this little atmosphere this little twenty five to thirty dollar atmos right here it's got this ridiculously tiny liner lock again I'm not expecting this knife to do much so it's more than okay it's quite alright getting on carrying on let's talk about blades I do like a spear point drop tip blade uh, aesthetically and functionally to me um, when you're cutting open clamshells or boxes, the spear point just kind of helps out a lot. This is a clip point actually on this Amarillo. Um, if we look at this Kershaw Crown, it's got a really nice gradual drop point on it. Got a lot of flat right here, a little bit of belly and a nice little point. Really beautiful looking blade as well. Hollow ground, it's got a little swedge on the top. It's got a couple of little tattoos on it, a little Kershaw here, but it's kind of really faded into there, as you can see. It's not really darkly done as they do on some of them, and you got the um, markings for 3160, which is what this is, and a little China marking, which is where it was made, which is fine with me. I mean, China makes junk, China makes good things too. Just like USA made stuff is good, sometimes USA can make good junk too doesn't matter really where it was made junk is junk and you know value is value so um, we talked about blade steel and what I like I don't like coated blades um, like on the Kershaw link right here it's got this uh, stone wash coating black coating on there I'm not a particular fan like that uh, I, I tend to I'm a fan of the satin finish I like a, just a nice shiny satin finish on my blade. I like shiny things <laughs> as you can see. Um, I also like uh, sterile blades. I really really like this new trend of sterile blades where there's absolutely no printing on here. 
Um, and actually, there's a little itty bitty, pretty bitty, 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 bitty pruning. And if I can bring this in close and get it to focus, you might be able to make out D2 on there, right on that flipper tab, right on there, right in there. I I'm really digging that. I like the I, I like the fact that Savivi just put a little for their logo, just a little C-type pivot right there. I, I think that is absolutely fantastic fantastic I absolutely love it I'd love to see maybe shard or um, the numbers printed somewhere not on the blade itself but maybe on the back of the tang right here just hidden you know kinda let me know exactly what model I'm dealing with but other than that absolutely gorgeous I love it I love it I, I like a nice sterile blade that makes me happy it makes me smile inside to know that my blade's not full of uh, marketing swank all over the place. Kershaw, Speed Safe, USA. I got the flag back here. I got 1812, the KIA patented, made in the USA. Like I got Kershaw on the clip. I got does it even say yeah Kershaw on the scale here. I mean this thing is just full of marketing swank and it drives me bananas. Like it's one of those things that companies do. Whatever is what it is. And into my very last pet peeve, and I'm going to pull out a couple of different knives here. And that is the sharpening choil. It absolutely drives me bananas that a knife company cannot get a sharpening choil correct. If you don't do a sharpening choil correctly, don't put one on there at all. Because now all you're doing is taking a bite out of my blade that either I have to go back in and finish your job, the knife maker's job, where I'm sitting here as a consumer wondering why I just paid money for this knife that's not even complete. And to me there's just a chunk of this blade missing. That's all there is. Because this sharpening choil doesn't even clear the plunge line so it's useless. Right here we got this weird little sharpening choil put this one up here because I want to pull this one out too this is a really good example we're going to open that up in a second and you can see my blade has developed a smile and smiles and frowns on blades are my uh, another thing I just don't like I don't like recurves and I don't like incorrect sharpening chores uh, I don't feel like a recurve does any good for me it makes any difference in my cutting pleasure the only difference a recurve does is make my blade more difficult to sharpen and tend to and same thing with an incorrect sharpening choil. All this does is give my blade this weird little inconsistency back here at the back. I mean, it's such an easy thing to do. All, you just have to clear the plunge line. It's so simple. Look at this dividend. This one here, I don't even understand why this is done like this. Why didn't you just come back out here, clear this plunge line, and put a sharpening choil in here? Why even cut all this? Why would you take this big bite of my blade out? What's happening here? Why couldn't it be more like this right here? And again, this, these, all these knives right here, this is knife is probably double the price of these three knives right here, especially this probably like seven or eight times the price of this knife right here. But again, I'd pay a little bit more money. Y your normal dividend is around fifty dollars with your aluminum scales. M three ninety is a little bit more than that, around seventy or eighty bucks. It's a Sixty seventy dollar knife right here you're doing everything right why wouldn't I put this in my pocket over all of these I do have a couple of complaints about the thickness of it but you know blade wise it's just on point and I love what their civil is doing with their blades so that's uh blades sharpening choil stuff like that moving on down the line we are going to talk next about lock and action uh, we did talk about lock up already and all that so we're just going to kind of move on to action and what I feel is a good action in a knife. We're also going to talk a little bit about automatics and assisted knives and what the I feel if any difference is. So this is a flipper tab knife as you can see uh, got not a bad action at all. This one here is an unassisted knife so let's talk about unassisted for a few seconds here. This one's running on bearings. This is running on a phosphor bronze and teflon washing. This one is also running on. Uh, if I can, I'm just gonna leave them in there. 
This one's also running on that. This one, uh, the LCK, I believe, is running on bearings as well. Or, oh no, it's running on phosphor bronze. So this is, I got two different styles of uh, mechanism here for a knife. Um, honestly, bearings on a flipper tab knife are where it's at and where you want to go. It just doesn't, this one here doesn't just have the action. It, it, just out of the box it's kind of a lot stiffer same with this right out of the box it's a really stiff knife but once it breaks in I mean it's just a beautiful action however with the thumb studs you can get away with having a phosphorus bronze and a teflon in there obviously and still get a pretty good action but you can get away with doing phosphor bronze bronze washers in a knife and be alright with it you can even get away with doing teflon in some knives and be alright and it's got a decent action to it um, let's talk a little bit about so that's action um, Depending on the knife is depending on what I like. If it's a flipper tab, I want it to be on bearings because I want that smoothness. If it's a um, thumb stud knife, I, I kind of I want it to be on phosphor bronze washers. Uh, another thing is, let's talk about the tent real quick. This knife right here, I can't shake that knife out. It's got a really good tent. That's the Kershaw Fraction. This one right here. <clears throat> I don't know if I can get it on camera, but if I do shake this thing hard enough, it, I can flip the blade out of this. But you got to shake it really hard. The, ten on, the point I'm trying to make is the tent on this is a lot softer than the tent on this, but that's okay. The flipper tab here has got to clear that detent, and I'm putting very little pressure on that just to, when it clears that detent, it just, that blade just comes flying out of there. This right here, a lot of the action really comes from my thumb. Yes, it needs to be nice and smooth so my thumb can do the work, but you know it, it doesn't need to have as strong as the tent because I can put a lot more into it if I need to still no wrist in there but you know and it'll just come flying out of there I mean this is just an awesome knife folks Kershaw Crown doesn't get enough love in the knife world enough respect in the knife world if you ask me Ooh, excuse me you saw that just dropped a knife on camera I am a beginner folks I never claimed to be an expert All right. So my thoughts on automatics and assisted, whether you have an automatic or an assisted, no matter what it is, I, I believe they all should be called them automatics. There's different kinds of automatics right now. There's an out the front or an out the side automatic. I don't, out the side automatic is very similar to like my Kershaw dividend or Kershaw leak here. The only difference is there's a little button here. You push that. There's a spring coil around. Well, I'm not 100% sure how the, all of them work, but some of the automatics, a little button, you push that down, it'll spring the blade open, bling, and they got a little spring around the uh, thing in here with the spring assist, the speed is safe, spring assisted knives, which are still to me an out the side automatic knife. The only difference is I have to push on a flipper tab or I have to push on a thumb stud to deploy the blade instead of on an automatic out the side I have to push on a button right here on the frame or somewhere on the frame to deploy the knife so I don't yeah there's a loophole there that makes this knife easier and more accessible for me to get which is why I have a lot of assisted knives because I like automatic knives and this is what's available to me this is the kind of automatic knife that's available to me to me this is just another type of out the side automatic knife Again, I don't see any difference whether you have a torsion bar or a spring or whatever opening the knife. If it comes out, it's all assisted. It's all automatic. It's all, you know, it's all the same. This doesn't fly out any faster. This assisted knife doesn't fly out any faster than an automatic knife. As a matter of fact, it probably flies out a little faster than some. Um, blade play and lock rock are not acceptable to me in any folding knife. I'm going to pull this knife out because this knife is under construction, not put together. Uh, as you can see, my pivot pin is way loose, not to mention, um, yeah. This has got a lot of, I'm, I'm, I'm just showing you this. This knife, again, I tighten up that pivot and this is all going to go away. This has got a lot of side-to-side uh, -side blade play. Don't like that. Not good on a knife. Um, I will, if your knife does this, put it down and go buy you a new knife. If you, the knife you're buying does this, put it down and find a new brand, find a new knife in that brand, find something that doesn't do that. Same with uh, vertical blade player lock rock. 
This one's got just a slight little bit of lock rock that does not have anything to do with the pivot being tightened. It does have to do with the blade design, and it has developed it over the years. And that is just because, if you look back here, this tang is tight. Uh, I'm sorry, this tang is flat, not tight, flat. And as you can see, there's actually a little bitty shiny spot. I don't know if we can get it to focus in on that. A little bitty shiny spot in there where it keeps hitting the stop, spin, stop pin. And over time, if I look on this one right here, I might have sanded that down a little too much. I've almost sanded the whole thing out, but over time it's just kind of fatigued that metal back there. And this particular knife and any knife that's designed like that is going to develop lock rock over time. It's been 10 years and this thing barely has nothing to it. So, or almost 10 years, somewhere along there. It was bought way earlier this decade, if not way late last decade. I don't really remember. Um, the other, as long as it doesn't have too much tolerance rock which is this right here I'm okay with it blade play and lock rock unacceptable in a brand new knife absolutely unacceptable in a brand new knife uh, older knives again you gotta have to look at that just depending on how it was designed it's better if that tang of that knife wraps around that to stop pin I do uh, talk about handle styles I, I do prefer neutral handle styles as opposed to like uh, the Civivi shard here it's got like the fingers this one's not too bad. It could be a little bit more comfortable. Um, it's all right. not actually too bad right here. If I kind of use this whatever choil, sharpening choil, it's a big sharpening choil really, uh, as a finger choil. But I'm awfully close to that blade. So, but as like this, it's not too bad. My fingers don't exactly fit into those finger choils, and so it kind of a little, yeah, a little bit of an ergonomic miss. Whereas bring back my Kershaw crown again here because it's just it feels really good in the hand nice neutral blade handle um, same thing with like my Kershaw Atmos here I also like the way this one feels good neutral blade handle um, and let's see oh my favorite one of my favorite carrying knives got this teardrop design handle almost where it kind of just bloop. Uh, I, li I like that that's a really nice handle design for me as well um, feels really good in the hand uh, very neutral feels good in different positions so I, I kind of tend to like those a little bit better uh, the finger choil, the finger grooves, finger spaces, stuff like that just yeah it's, it can be hit or a miss so uh, I prefer again we're going to talk a little bit about clip and carry uh, I prefer my knives to carry right hand tip up only or uh, right hand tip up is what I prefer my knives to come in, which is why I don't mind the Kershaw crown being like that. I understand there's lefties out there that are going to be hurt that the Kershaw crown can't be carried left-handed, or I guess you could, just it's going to be carried differently. Um, not the way it was intended to carry either. Um, sometimes I will carry a larger folding knife, but again, as I explained in, earlier in the video, real estate is very important to me as I want to get in there to get to my wallet, my hearing aid batteries, um, and my hearing aid filters that are kept in that pocket some of my favorite manufacturers I absolutely love Kershaw I started with the Kershaw and the Kershaw Link was one of my first knives that I bought as an adult I'm well into my adulthood now and this knife purchase was over 20 years ago and I don't even have my original Kershaw anymore well not quite 20 years ago almost 20 years ago about 15 years ago um, I lost that knife a long time ago, about 10 years ago is when I lost that knife. I also like Benchmade, Spyderco, Ontario, Civivi, and CRKT. Uh, you will find all of those in my collection, uh, along with uh, Open L Case, Tangram, uh, are the current knives that I have in my collection and that will most likely keep a spot in my collection. I don't know that uh, Mr. Military and Police is going to be sticking around much longer after this video. This is just an example of nice that, oh it's got a glass breaker, who cares, that nice that I just don't like. Um, by the way folks, uh, as this is an introduction video, I am ADD, so if I get off the topic and kind of ramble a little bit, that's why. Uh, it's just what it is, the way I was made. Alright, so...
let me talk about the companies again real quick while I did my little ADD off topic rant there for a second this is kind of more for manufacturers if anybody ever even sees this video which you know whatever they may or they may not you know um, I, I doubt I doubt it this channel probably won't even get up off the ground and nobody will ever view these videos and you know yeah whatever so Benchmade, Kershaw, CRKT if you got brands like Civivi here that are just making excellent quality knives and they even have a line that are just as good around the forty dollar price range which many of these knives down here at the bottom many of these knives right here with the exception of these two that's their price point and with this beautiful aesthetics that are blades their attention to their detail they're doing sharpening choils correctly their action is just unbelievable their blade centering is perfect a little bit of aesthetics that I don't like like this could be a little bit more rounded have a nice more roundish feel like this right here so it just kinda lives in your pocket a little better maybe doesn't need these different finger grooves in here or finger choils Still, I don't feel this filter tab needs to be quite that big this has got such a good detent it could go off with a nice little chopped finger choil like on your fraction here and get away with it just fine just some little bitty improvements to this knife would make this an excellent knife and the fact that they're ticking all the right boxes like they're doing a properly done sharpening choil they're doing a beautifully just a beautiful blade with no marketing on it they're not trying to you know, like push their brand in your face and just shove it down your throat I like how it's just branded right there and that's about it uh, they're doing everything right they're doing everything right I, I would like to see them come up with a little bit smaller knife than that so I could carry it and if they do I'm gonna be on board I'll, I'm gonna get it because like I said Kershaw you don't start paying attention and doing stuff like putting a proper sharpening choil on there instead of just taking a chunk out of my blade same with UCRKT Benchmade if you don't figure out how to get your knives out of the door without blade play and blade centering problems and stuff like that then you might find yourself in the place where Gerber was just a few years back and fighting now to regain the respect of the knife community and the world in general so I hope that I've clearly explained what a practical pocket knife is to me and why I carry and collect a specific type of knife I know the knife that I carry isn't for everyone. There are first responders, farmers, carpenters, oil field personnel, etc. that demand a bigger and beefier folding knife. I understand that for military and police personnel, they want a tactical type blade for a practical everyday carry blade. Which is fine. And I'm, in me and my profession and my daily life, knives that live in my pocket don't come out all that often. So therefore, they can't take up a lot of real estate and hinder what else is in my pocket as I've said before and that's what a practical pocket knife is for me let's talk a bit about where I want this channel to go for now we're just going to be focusing on pocket knives we might get into them, start getting into my fixed blades and my chef knives I do have a few ideas that I might toy around with in the future in the next year or so I uh, don't really want to say too much about that until I know more about it and where I'm going to go with it. Uh, for now, I think I'm just going to kind of do a few tabletop reviews, focus on some knives. Um, again, I'm not an expert or a knife maker, and uh, as another famous YouTuber would say, I'm just a jackass with a camera, and I'm not even a good camera, and a little bit too much time on my hands. Take my videos with a grain of salt, and please understand that these are my opinions and what I think I want at this time. It may change, it may not, only time will tell. If you tuned in to watch me ramble for the last 30 minutes or so about this, I appreciate it. If you want to, if you found this informative or entertaining or anything like that, please tune in and check out a couple more of my other videos that will be coming up here. Maybe a little bit about the curse all time. I hope it wasn't a total waste of your time. Maybe we'll see you on the next video. Until then, please take it easy and enjoy life. It's the only one you get.